you're tuning into another Stardew Valley tips and tricks video. Now to be making millions in Stardew Valley, it highly relies on you not only to be organized, but to be as resourceful as you can. Here are some tips that I can suggest on things that you should be improving and to start making these changes so you can start making yourself some million dollars. Number one is selling crops. Now, obviously this is a farming sim and no, this tip isn't just to start farming, but it's how you can start improving on your farming that actually makes a difference. See, even though it requires a lot of energy and time to start setting up your farm for some crops, as your resources improve, so should your crops. I would highly suggest sticking to crops, especially in your year two playthrough and onwards, onto crops that actually sell for more money than just to sell any other crops. The only time you should be considering using any other crop is to either include it into a recipe so you can cook that dish, either to give it to your favorite Pelican Town resident, or if it's needed for a quest. The amount of crops that you have on your farm all depends on how much time you want to be spending to take care of these crops. With our sprinklers, especially early game, you want to start looking at having your farm at around 50 to 100 crops, but be sure to have some sort of food in your inventory to replenish your energy when it starts to get low. Cave carrots are really easy to find in the mines and are highly suggested, as well as making field snacks as they're really easy to make. Also, once you start unlocking speed grows, I would highly suggest using them as early as possible. Speeding the process of a crop is highly beneficial because you might actually be able to unlock an additional crop to be grown in that same season. And once you have sprinklers unlocked, I would highly suggest putting them down and as many as you can. Not only does it save you energy and the time to be watering your crops, but it saves you time, especially late game, to be doing other things. Number two, not using your farm to be placing your machines and your trees. Most machines in the game can actually be placed off your farm and that is our second tip for today. We might have the tendency, especially if we haven't revamped our farm since year one, to place all our machines near our farmhouse so it's easy to reach. Why not use some space elsewhere to free up some space? This includes using the space within your farmhouse, within the greenhouse and shed, using the cave on your farm or any place in Pelican Town that isn't your farm. Tap trees can really benefit from this as there's no limitations on how many tap trees you can place off of your farm. The syrups that are made from these can either be used in recipes such as kegs and rain totems or will benefit from the level 10 foraging perk tapper that increases the worth of a syrup by 25%. Number three, making machines to increase your profit. Now, many machines in Sardew Valley will benefit you in the long run, but it's the amount of machines that you have that actually matters the most. Machines that benefit you in making you more money, such as crystallariums, kegs, and bee houses should have no limit on how many you have on your farm. You should be making many machines, especially when they assist other machines. For example, lightning rods should be made in plenty since they produce you battery pack. Battery packs are super important for those that are crafting iridium sprinklers and crystallariums, which I would highly suggest for making you some passive money. All you need to do is place a gem within a crystallarium and wait a few days until it's finished, pick up that gem, and it will continue doing that again and again. One of my favorite suggestions is getting a deluxe shed and filling that in with 137 crystallariums and have all these crystallariums replicate a diamond. And with this method, in five days, those crystallariums will produce you over 100,000 gold. Other great options for the crystallariums are Hellvite and Star Shards, which are both obtained either by breaking a Magma Geode or an Omni Geode. Number four, if you haven't noticed already, you can never have enough resources. You may find yourself with a singular stack of 999 stone and wood, but with all of today's mentions, you'll start to realize that resources should really be your top priority. I will suggest having a log either written down or in your head for the resources that you need for certain upgrades or machines. So if you actually do need to spend days that you're not sure what to do on, definitely use these days to collect yourself resources. Fish ponds is our number five tip as they're a great way to make yourself some passive income. With a variety of fishes you can place within a pond, they can either produce you row which turned into age row can sell for a lot of money or even an item that you might need for your playthrough or you can use to sell. Consider a lava eel found on floor 100, stingray from the pirate cove over on Ginger Island and super cucumber fish at the ocean in summer or fall after 6 p.m. Obviously the more more ponds you have are the better, as most fishes have a chance to produce you something daily, which without any effort is a great way to be making yourself passive income. If you're enjoying your stay, leave a like. If you want to see more Stardew Valley videos, why not consider subscribing and my Fuzzalicious Candles is
still available, I'll leave the link below. Number six, using the mines in Skullcavern to be farming you some resources. The amount of great items and resources found in both the mines and Skullcavern is a definite must, and this will be a reoccurring thing in your late game playthrough. For example, for the mines, resetting the mines on certain floors is a really great tip if you're trying to get yourself as much ore as you can. My suggestion is using floor 20, 40, and 80 for copper, iron, and gold ore respectively. For iridium ore, I would highly suggest having crystallariums making you jade and taking these jades on Sunday over to the desert trader at Calico Desert. You can trade these jades for staircases only on Sundays and use this to progress you down around to floor 50 or 80 to start getting yourself some iridium ore. Hopefully while doing this as well, you'll get yourself a lot of omni geodes, which when broken has a 5% chance to gain you some iridium ore as well. Number seven, being aware of your skill perks as these could benefit you when choosing the right ones. For example, when choosing geologist at level five of money, you can choose gemologist at level 10, which will allow your gems to be sold for 30% more. On the contrary, if you find yourself selling a lot of your bars to be making you money, you can choose blacksmith at level five of mining, which will increase the sell price of these bars by 50%. If you're not happy with your choices at level five and 10, you can always go to the Statue of Uncertainty over by the sewers and trade in 10,000 gold to change up your perks. Other perks that affect the sell price of selling items includes both the level five perks at farming, as well as the artisan perk at level 10 when choosing tiller, tapper at level 10 of foraging when choosing forest at level five, and for fishing, there's fisher at level five, and at level 10, there's the angler perk. Number eight is selling your artifacts. Once you hand them into Gunther for their first time, there really isn't much of a use for them after that. This won't exactly make you a millionaire, but you'd be surprised how much you have on your farm and how much space you could be saving if you get rid of them. The following artifacts are the artifacts you should be keeping because these will be required for further recipes. You've got the dinosaur egg, which you can either turn into mayonnaise or use it in an incubator. There is the dry starfish, which may be requested by some fishes in a pond so they can expand. There is the dwarf gadget for crafting a farm computer. And you may want to keep any of your prehistoric skeletal or fossil artifacts as these can be used in a bone mill to turn into fertilizer. Number nine should you still be selling fish? By this stage, the only time you should be fishing is to level up to level 10 of fishing, to catch any fish that you need for ponds, and any fish used in recipes, whether it's for a cooked dish or for a crafting item. Unless you're frequently fishing yourself some lava eel, ice pip, stonefish, soupy cucumber, puffer fish, catfish, and sturgeon, then there isn't a reason for you to be selling your fish to be making you money. You can, however, utilize crab pots instead though. If you've chosen the trapper perk at level five of fishing, there are two really great skills that become available at level 10 of fishing. You've got yourself the choice of mariner that will stop crab pots producing you junk items. And there's lore master, which will stop crab pots requiring bait. Number 10, it is artisan machines. Every artisan machine within the game will add that extra benefit in making you more money when used correctly. Just like for example, bee houses. Bee houses will produce your honey every four days, except in winter. When next to a flower, they'll start to produce that type of honey, which will actually impact the sole value of that honey. Cars, kegs, mayo machines, you name it. All these machines should be used, especially late game. The more machines you have, the more money you're making. The least amount of effort you're using to have this money being produced for you, the better. I hope you've enjoyed your stay. Till next time, take care.